So if you like auto animate in XD or you've never used it before, you are gonna love this tutorial. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills in this tutorial. We're going to learn how to auto animate a really smooth navigation all in Adobe XD. And if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, there's a link in the video description where you can download this exact XD file. And there will be a little bit of Illustrator in here as well, but if you don't have Illustrator, don't worry. I'm gonna include the thing I create in Illustrator, which is a little, a little circle segment. That's what this is, I'll include that in the XD file so you just, if you haven't got Illustrator or you don't wanna use it, you don't know how to use it or anything, don't worry, it's fine, it'll be there so you can stay in XD. But anyway, without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay, so you can see I'm now in Adobe XD and I've opened up the XD project file. It will look something like this if you do choose to download it and follow along. And first of all, I've created this little circular shape made up of four segments. So essentially we are on the profile of Mamma Mia. And if you click on uh, followers, it will take you to this artboard. If you click on comments, it will take you to this artboard. And if you click on reviews, it will take you back to this artboard. And if I just click on this, you can see all of my layers are named up. This is incredibly important when auto animating because auto animate will look at the name of a layer, so say uh, frog, and then it will look for the other corresponding layer called frog on the artboard you're auto animating to, and then it will create a, a link between those two things and then animate that transition. So layer naming is important and this can get incredibly complicated. And uh, as you'll see in this tutorial, layer naming is pretty much essential. Uh, unless you love frustration, then leave all your layers uh, completely unkempt, unorganized and uh, enjoy the chaos. But anyway, so that's the uh, navigation bar here. And then at the top here, we're gonna have this little slider that moves around and it's gonna show which one we're on. So this is the icon for reviews. This is the icon for followers and this is the icon for comments. So what we're gonna do, first of all, is we're gonna link all these together. So you can see these are grouped at the moment. So if I switch over to prototype mode at the top of the screen, what I can do is click on followers and we'll drag this to the followers artboard. And this is going to be activated on a tap. So when a user taps the followers link, the action is going to be an auto animate. And we'll set the easing to ease in out and the duration to 0.5. Press return, that's it. And of course, if we select the next one, reviews, well, we're on the reviews screen now, so we're not gonna need to drag that anywhere. Comments, we do the same thing. We click on the blue tab, drag it to the respective artboard and it's, it's completed all of the same information. So we don't need to edit anything from that Dropbox. You do it once, XD remembers. So we'll just go and drag all of these through to the respective artboard. And you can see the active artboard is highlighted in the color as well. They've all got their own different color theme. So it just makes it a little bit easier to identify everything. Nope, that's not going anywhere, Dan. As you just explained, and then what we can do is press Command or Control on the keyboard, depending on if you're on a Mac or a PC, and this will show all the links you've created. So we can see we've created all six of those links. So these do now link to each other. And if I click play at the top of the screen, this window pops up and we should be able to click through all of the artboards. Fantastic, so we've got all that working. Now we just need to create the fun stuff. So we'll close that down switch back over to design. So when we're on this reviews artboard, this icon will be visible. When we're on the followers artboard, this icon will be visible. And this is gonna slide around as well. So I'm gonna show you quickly how to create this. You can do it in XD, but I love Illustrator for creating my graphics personally. So if I click on the avatar here, we can see from the property inspector that the width is 90. It's a bit taller because we've got the hair popping out the top, but 90 pixels, that's what I'm gonna to work to. So I'll jump into Illustrator. I've created, well, this is one I've created already. So I'm gonna left click and hold where the rectangle tool is, select the ellipse tool, and rather than clicking and dragging, I'm gonna left click, and it is in millimeters. You can change this in the Illustrator preferences to 
pixels, or you can just type in 90, because that's what it was in XD, and just type in PX. Now, when I click in the box below, Illustrator will just convert the 90 pixels to millimeters. So this is the conversion. So you can ignore whatever units it's using and it will do that conversion. But this is the size, so we can deselect the fill. And what I'm gonna do is then grab the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle like this. And then with that rectangle selected, go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, hold shift, hover over one of the corners and rotate. Holding shift will snap that to a 90 degree rotation. And then I can drag over everything and from the properties panel, or if you're on an older version of Illustrator, go up to window, down to align. And I'm just going to align all of these. So everything is central. And then just select both of these rectangles holding shift. And from the pathfinder panel, you can see it down here. Again, if you're on an older version, it's up in the window menu. And it will combine those into one shape. And then if I select this cross that I've now created, drag over everything, make sure the cross is on top of the circle and click the next one along, which is minus front or subtract. And it does this. And then with the direct selection tool, we can just drag over all four of these anchor points in the middle and then press delete or backspace. And it will leave us with this. And we can now drag over this and we can increase the stroke weight from the stroke panel. We can even change the stroke type or the cap type rather to rounded. And you can see it's very, very easy to create something like this. Now, this is the same as 90 pixels high and 90 pixels wide. That is exactly the same as our avatar, but we do want to make it a little bit bigger than that because as you can see, if we had it exactly the same, it would just fit around the edge. So we want a little bit of a gap so we can hold down shift to scale this up. And if you hold down alter option as well, it will scale from the center. So we scale it up a little bit more. And we could even rotate this round just to match the example I've got over there on the right. And then when you're happy, drag over everything, go to edit, copy, jump back into XD, go to edit and paste. And there we go. And the beauty of this is on the latest version of XD now, it has uh, much more refined support for Illustrator. So things like stroke, I can still adjust all of this. I can adjust the cap type, make it square. I can change the, the color. So a lot more flexibility when working in Illustrator. If that's your like preferred thing like me, you can bring it into XD and still edit a lot of stuff. So really, really cool. That's how you create it. Um, but as I say, if you are sticking in just XD with this tutorial, I'll include this shape somewhere in the document you download. So it's just black to start with. And what we're gonna do is we'll double click or single click actually. So you can see group 60, this is pretty horrendous. We can then double click on this and go inside it. And we've got path 829, path 828, path 827, and path 826. That is incredibly disorganized. So we're gonna do something about this. So I'm gonna double click on group 60 on the name and I'm gonna call this selector. Goodness, that, that layer disorganization almost made me a little bit angry then. Oh, come on, calm down, Dan. Let's keep it cool. Okay, so if I select this one here, you can see that this is the right one. This is the bottom one. So I'm just double clicking on the layer name on the text at the top. And of course we've got left and if you want to uh, move these around and reorder them you can do that from the layers panel so there we go we're all good and what i'm going to do is select the top one i'm going to hold shift select the right one nope nope that selects them all we'll select the top one we'll do this individually we'll select the top one and from the appearance panel on the right just drag that to zero we'll select the right one drag the appearance or the opacity to zero and we'll do the bottom one as well. So it just leaves this one segment. And what I can actually do is grab the eyedropper tool and just sample this same reddish pink color. And I've actually got the wrong layer selected. So we'll, uh, we'll try that again. We'll select the left one. There we go, eyedropper tool, click. And there we go. That looks really, really cool. So this is going to only be showing on the active artboard. 
So what I'm going to do now is now I've named everything and it's all named correctly, I can now copy this onto another artboard. So I can select it, go to edit, copy, click on this artboard here and go edit and paste. Paste it in exactly the same position and then do the same on the last one. Now the reason that I've got this as a circle is because now it's going to rotate around the central point, the middle of the circle, which is of course somewhere about here. So if I click on this now and hover over the corner, I can rotate this and you can see it rotates around that central point. So that's why I went through the trouble of setting up this custom shape in Illustrator. So I can hold shift and it will snap it to 90 degrees like so. And again, we can do that here, rotate, hold shift, rotate it 180 degrees. And then we can double click to go inside and then just eyedropper tool for color. So double click to go in the group, use the eyedropper tool or just pick a color from the border color picker. And there we go. Now we need some icons, of course. So we'll just click, hold shift and select these two icons and go edit copy and once they're copied to the clipboard we can jump over to the other artboards and go edit and paste edit and paste oh and we forgot the review one as well so we'll just go edit copy <laughs> edit paste so we've got all of the icons that are named correctly as well by the way on all of the different artboards so if we click play now let's have a look at what we've done so far so we can see this actually moves, it's working, which is good. It's always good when you're doing a tutorial and things work. So we know that that's working, so we can leave that alone for now. But what we're gonna need to do is only have the, the correct icon showing on the respective artboard. So on this artboard here, if I select these two holding shift and drag the opacity to zero, and on this one, we'll drag them to zero. And on this last one, we'll drag this to zero. We can play that again now. And there we go, pretty smooth. Now there is something else that we can do. We can, we can get a bit more creative with this. So if I go over to this artboard here, what I can do is I can click on the star and I could, let's try holding down shift and I'm gonna use the right arrow key and go one, two, three. Just nudge it towards the center. If I go back and play this again, rather than just simply fading on the spot, you'll see it actually moves, it moves into the center. So if I now go back over here, we've got the followers icon, of course it is hidden. But if I go shift on the keyboard and up, one, two, three, you can see that I can now jump back and forwards between these and the icons, they're do, still doing the fade from zero to 100% opacity, but they're just moving and it just adds a little bit more, almost like it's going in and out of the bar that is moving as well. So it's really, really subtle, but you can do awesome stuff like this in XD using the auto animate feature. It gets very complicated though. So practice with it, you'll definitely get used to it. And hopefully this tutorial will help you in that, uh, in that journey. So let's try this one, hold shift, one, two, three. This is the comments icon. Hold shift, one, two, three. Hold shift, one, two, three. And hold shift, and one, two, three. So I'm just nudging them three uh, shift, clicks, clicks, key presses. So if you use the arrow keys on the keyboard, it moves an object one pixel if you hold down shift it moves it 10 pixels. So essentially 30 pixels towards the center of the user's profile avatar here. So let's, let's click play and see if I've screwed this up. Okay, there we go, that looks pretty good. So just check all the different links, jump around a little bit. Looks pretty good to me. You can get all kinds of crazy with this. Um, have a lot of fun. If you follow along with this tutorial and you do download this XD file, um, let me know how you get on with it. I'd love some feedback on if this is useful, supplying the file as well. But um, this is a really, really good test for auto animate. Like once you've done this tutorial and you've kind of got this file working, um, what you can create with this feature is like literally whatever you can come up with in your mind is brilliant. 
So we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're going to do a little bit more. Um, we're going to animate the content here as well. Now I've grouped all of this together. You can see here we have reviews, dash content, followers content, and comments content. And I can select this here. And we'll go to edit copy. And then what I'll do is I'll go and select the followers artboard and go edit paste. And what I'll do is I'll hold shift and use the left arrow key. We'll go one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll just drop the opacity down on this one. And if I go back and play this first artboard, rather than just fading in and fading out between artboards, you can see it slides out. But it doesn't really work because this text doesn't slide in. So what we'll do is we'll select the text that is on this artboard and go edit and copy. Switch over here, edit, paste, and do the opposite. So we'll hold shift on the keyboard, press the right arrow key, one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll play that again. And it looks like this because I didn't drop the opacity down. So remember to drop the opacity to zero. Then we'll play. And you can see now really, really subtle, but it just fades in, fades out, and it's just got a little bit of movement. So it kind of has that sort of sliding push style effect to it. Now, something that you will notice is we're using auto animate. Um, the button color is instantly changing. I don't think auto animate, at least at the time of recording this video, supports like a, a graduation from one color to another. I would love to see that. I would love that so much. Um, so hopefully in a future update, colors will graduate into one another. But to be honest, because there's loads of other movement here happening, it's a lot less noticeable because there's other stuff moving that like draws your eye. So. Okay, so we're gonna do this last one now. So we'll grab the copy here, go to edit, copy, and we'll paste this, edit and paste. And we'll hold shift, one, two, three, four, five to the left, drop the opacity, and then we'll grab the content from here. Edit, copy, this gets so complicated. Edit and paste. Hold shift and press right, one, two, three, four, five. I promise once you do this more often, you get used to it. We can click play. And you can see that's working. This one's working. The only one that I think isn't working yet is this one. So going from reviews all the way to comments. And the best thing to do if in doubt is just test it as you go. So what we'll do is we'll make sure we select this here. If you get any problems selecting the right layers or groups or folders, just use the layers panel from the bottom left corner here. Then you can just select it here rather than on the artboard itself. So we'll go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste, hold shift, one, two, three, four, five to the left, drag the opacity to zero from the appearance panel. And then we'll select this one here, the comments, edit, copy, paste it on here, edit, paste, hold shift, press right, one, two, three, four, five, drag that down. So we're just making sure we've covered the transitions from every single artboard to another artboard. Click play. And there we go. If I've done this correctly, we should be able to go back from any artboard to any artboard and we've done the transition for all of them. And there we go. That's how to create a beautifully smooth auto animate navigation all in Adobe XD with a little pinch of Illustrator as well. But remember, if you want to follow along, XD file is linked in the description and I'll include that circular segment thing in there as well so you can stay within XD if you want to. But hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do. Drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care. I'll see you